we're back people and today we're bringing out film on kelvin joseph newest miami dolphins cornerback they traded him straight up for noah igbenogany and i actually like this trade for the dolphins overall i think starting with the positives joseph is just a better football player he's an amazing athlete the athleticism is what pops on the tape the most he's a better special teams player he can play inside and outside he has that versatility like he played a lot in the slot uh, later on in his career and in like preseason 2023 when we get to that film he's been more of a slot but you can just see like he just understands football a little bit better than Noah does. Noah would always look a little bit uncomfortable when he was playing, even when he's making positive plays. And I think he's also, Joseph is just a good fit for the scheme. He looked always better when he could keep things in front of him, zone match type of thing, instead of playing press, because he will struggle with ball skills at time when he has to locate the ball with his back to the quarterback. He can also struggle with uh, his footwork, his technique, and press coverage. And then he'll give up a little bit separation on double moves, you know, getting over aggressive and things like that. So he has some similar struggles to Noah, but I just think he has a much higher upside. And then the biggest negative, he has those off field issues, which. Um, he's had since college it hasn't been anything too crazy since he's gotten to the NFL but definitely something to keep in mind but I like it as an upside move because they kind of saw what they needed to see out of Noah wasn't gonna get anything too productive out of him so they went for a more of an upside pick and I think honestly he's like a better player right now too just as you can see here bottom of the screen in quarters like didn't get too many snaps in quarters but you can just see his transition break on this when he can keep things you know in front of him you know sit on these routes like this square up and then hold his leverage and once the tight end slash receiver breaks the outside here he just breaks on it very nicely undercuts this you can just see the very quick twitch transition i also like what he brings to the team as like a special teams player like he was one of like his speed stats like really stand out on special teams um if you look at the numbers on those two like he has like the highest acceleration and speed last year on special teams so um, I like it as a move. He's not going to like start or anything, but I like him more depth as a depth option than Iggy was. Here in quarters at the top of the screen, um, just playing quarters again, just staying patient, maintaining his leverage, not getting over the top. I feel like this is something you would see maybe Iggy struggle with. Like if he was in quarters like this and he had to open up, he would float too hard to the inside because look at the receiver, number one at the top takes an inside release and he would either float too hard to the inside and get over the top and give out this outbreaker or he would sink underneath and try to get to this out route but um he does just a good job maintaining his leverage staying patient sees number one's the only one that's threatening him this guy gets the flat and then he breaks towards him and it's just an absolute dead route so nice to see him showing some patience and football intelligence which is not always the greatest he definitely has his weaknesses as you'll see throughout the video you'll see some of the things he can work on even on the positive plays where he makes like a you know a pass breakup he can still clean some things up technique wise He's playing cover one here, but I do like him more when he gets a little bit of space to work with, not having to pay, play press. I feel like his footwork gets a little wonky. He plays a little too upright in his chest. He doesn't sit down too much. But when he can read the receivers from the this position, he does a much better job mirroring and matching and just anticipating routes. And he'll ask, be asked to do that a lot more in the Fangio scheme. Because even though this is man-to-man, -man, like this is what you're going to be doing in Fangio a lot like. Playing from this distance, this depth, alignment like this, holding your leverage, and then just matching up a guy who presses you vertically this far down the field. And you can see him just break on this, read this very well on the end breaker. He loses some reps in this game, but then he just has more positive reps than Noah would. Like, Noah, even on his positive reps, looks very uncomfortable. Just not the greatest athlete either, and I just like the athleticism upside that Kelvin Joseph brings to the team. Some more cover one, this time on the outside, some soft press work. Takes a little bit of a false step there, things he can work on in his technique, but he's still ability to you know, match this, break on this, um, kind of just a false step forward, then gets out of it. He opens up the gate a little bit early, um, just anticipating this, but it's a third and seven situation. I like him maintaining that upfield shoulder positioning. Could have just stayed a patient a little bit more. It opens that tad bit early, but he's able to break, get physical, get downhill. And you'll see once we get to the nickel tape, he's very willing to get physical. He can play zone, he can play man. Um, just a lot of those little things that need to work on, but I just feel like he's farther ahead than Igbenogany was. He's also um, played one, he has one year less experience in the NFL too. Kelvin Joseph at the top of the screen. This is where you see him struggle at the catch point. Like a lot of good here too. This is kind of like I was talking about with Igbenogany. Obviously just a great throw, first of all. Sometimes it's hard to just beat a perfect throw. But he does a pretty good job here. Like he takes a little bit of a false step forward, but then he stays square, stays balanced. Um, opens up at a good time. He's running stride for stride. He has that speed to match on a vertical plane. He has pretty good speed. The athleticism's there. He turns to locate the football where he is. 
he probably should have played this through the receiver's hands, but he tries to turn away from the receiver to play it, and then he tries to turn back too late, and is just not able to make the play at the catch point. Ball skills can definitely be an issue for him, as like it was for Igbenogane. So it's not like you're getting a real upgrade there, but it's also like, I think he brings upgrades to different spots while not bringing as many negatives, and just can get a little lost at times right there in those situations. Here we got him down in the box, though. So now we're in the 2023 preseason. And in the preseason, he actually looked, I think, the best he's looked in his career. So it kind of looks like with the trade, like, Igbenogane and Kelvin are both, like, playing the best ball of their career, but just had struggles early on, didn't live up to their expectations, um, just with some issues to their games. But Kelvin Joseph playing a lot of slot, playing a lot of nickel, so he can easily come in and be nickel depth and outside depth. But he's willing to get involved versus the run. He's not, like, the most willing physical guy ever. But he's got decent, like, just like a decent profile to him. And he's definitely going to stick his nose in there when he's, you know, sees this hole. He can be a part of the run fit, stays patient, stays square. He sees this hole open up. He knows he has to get over the top there and then help get involved. So nice play just to see him at least being involved in the running game when he's playing that nickel position. Because if you play the nickel, you're going to be involved in those run fits. Cowboys right here running cover six. He's playing the nickel again. A lot of these reps are going to be down in the slot. Just a good job getting physical, rerouting the number two here. You reroute this guy, you're physical at the point of attack, you pass him off to the inside, and then once this tight end late releases because he gets like a nice little chip and then releases late to the flat, he's staying square, he's keeping his eyes to the number three here, which is, you know, his job, he does good base, passes it off, and then gets down to match versus the tight end, so it's a pretty good job, you know. Getting hands on the number two, eyes on the number three, passing it off, and then staying in a good position, pretty, you know, textbook rep in the underneath zone playing as a flat defender. In the slot versus Philip Dorsett, he actually got beat by Philip Dorsett a couple times last season, but versus in this preseason game, he matched up against him pretty well. In cover one, press man to man, playing, you know, soft. Does a decent job, like his feet could be a little bit better inching back here. He gets a little choppy with his feet when he could be a little more smooth, but he gets a little choppy, but he's staying square. He's staying patient. The uh, bend here, the lean in his body is good. And then once he commits to the outside, he, you know, he's able to turn with him. He doesn't open the gate too early as, you know, open those hips, open the gate. He gets physical, maybe a little too grabby there, but he's able to play, stay in a perfect position and squeeze the receiver towards the sideline to, you know, never give him a chance to make a play on the ball. Some more good examples of him here in off-man coverage, basically just matching one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, which you're going to have to do if you play on outside in this Dolphins scheme. Even when they're running zone, you're going to be matched up versus number one a decent amount of time, whether it's, you know, two by two, three by one, backside of three by one, especially. But here, you know, showing like he's playing zone pre-snap, just basically reading, looking towards the QB, but then he snaps his eyes to the receiver, stays square, stays patient, maybe, you know, turns towards this a uh, little bit too much, but he could have, you know, stayed a little better with his footwork there. But he reads the slant, breaks on it, holds the leverage, and then comes down and makes a play at the catch point. He is a lot better at the catch point when he's able to come down through the receivers and he can keep his eyes on the quarterback the whole time. It's just when he turns his back to the quarterback, he can feel a little bit uncomfortable. That's why I'm a fan of this move. I just think, you know, he still has a lot to work on, and I don't think he's a perfect player. He's going to be more of a depth corner anyways. But with all the injuries, I think he adds better depth than what Noah would bring to this team. Um, Noah just didn't quite work out. Um, and I think even though they both can struggle to finish out the catch point, Joseph is more likely to just have better coverage and make up for it with athleticism. Joseph does a good job, you know, making a play here to finish this. There's some good, some bad here, um, but he finishes through and helps knock the ball out late. Just a pretty weird rep from him overall. Just, it is cover one, so he's put in a pretty tough spot here. Like, based on his leverage, he's not allowed to press, so this guy has a free reign to really go wherever he wants. He knows he has some help to the inside. He's kind of, like, playing hard inside leverage, though, and he really opens up this gate too early. He allows him to, you know, give them a two-way go. He could really break to the inside, break to the outside, and it puts Joseph in a tough spot. He breaks the outside. He gets a, a little separation allowed to be created there, but you can at least see the ability to recover. Like, so the first start of this rep, not pretty, but he's able to make up for it with that athleticism. Ball is even thrown back shoulder, and he's still able to close and finish down through and punch that ball out late, which is an impressive rep. He's just, like, got nice uh, prototypical sort of athlete good size that type of thing like 
coming out of college, like if it wasn't for the off field stuff, I wouldn't have been surprised if he was a first round pick just based on his tools alone. More of a like a first round pick type of guy than Noah would have been. Noah was a first round guy, but he was more of a second, third round player in my opinion. And Joseph just needs to put it all together. Um, see if you know if he can love football totally because I mean I know he has like some other stuff he does I know he does rapping and I just don't know what his full focus is and he's also had you know some troubles you know staying in good graces with his teams in the past so we'll see how it works out another rep here versus the slot fade he gets to play some soft press here where he's you know inching back off the line of scrimmage he ends up making a play through the catch point this is a better example of him playing through the hands like the other play I showed earlier was 2022 so Maybe he's shown some improvement. Can he keep this up consistently? Who knows? I actually like the start of this rep. Staying square, staying patient, good lean, you know, not playing too high with his chest up here. Footwork's pretty decent. I would say he gets a little too over, once he gets hands on, he gets a little too overextended, lunges too much to him, and can get a little too handsy right here. So he can improve on that, but then is able to, you know, let go, run stride for stride, not get too panicked. You know, we've seen him, you know, maybe get a little too panicked when he's in this situation. Ball's a little underthrown. A lot of times, corners get uh pass interference here but he just plays through the hands goes up times it up perfectly an excellent improvement on this rep going into 2023 now this is preseason so you take it with a grain of salt but it is nice to see him at least show an improvement technique wise at the catch point from 2022 to 2023 last play that we're gonna break down for kelvin joseph in the slot again cowboys are running cover three but he's just matched up on the number two if number two uh he's just basically responsible for seams and flats if he works up the seam he matches it if he goes to flat he matches it and he's just staying back with his footwork it's nice i like to see these types of reps where he's zone matching on the outside and he's just playing top down so he, ha he keeps his top leverage here play top down and once he breaks close very smooth transition you can see the athleticism and he closes very quickly and the ball you know gets thrown far away if it was thrown more into the chest he had even a chance to make a play at the catch point so i came away honestly more impressed with his film than i thought it was would it be because just from what I'd heard, he struggled, not lived up to expectations, but his film was definitely more impressive to me than Noah's, and I think, you know, he could help, especially with all the corner injuries, so if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let's get to the baby.